one shrimp kind, just open up and you can catch it. Um, so I have some things going, so I might be kind of jumping back and forth a little bit. So I'm Chef Calvin. I'm a certified executive chef. I teach culinary arts at the Midwest Culinary Institute. I've taught there for 20 years. Prior to that, I worked at Shriners Burn Institute right next door with Miss Teresa. We used to work together. Yeah. So, um, very um, involved in nutritional cooking. It's kind of my passion. And actually the book that you've been given is a book that I wrote. So that book, a lot of the recipes are very low in fat, they're low in sodium. Um, you're able to use some convenience products. So we're gonna go through that today if we fit a lecture to help you when you go to the grocery store to make smart decisions um, about what you're doing. Are you all actually, it's called scratch cooking, are you actually cutting up things and cooking things or are you microwave? You can be honest. A little bit of both. Scratch. Yeah. And that's good. And that's, that's what I'm going to show you. There are some convenience products that are okay. But it's better to go ahead and cut things up and touch and feel the food as we go. So what I'm going to show you is um, we're going to go over some basic kitchen um, tips. And then we're going to do a, a steamed veggie packet and a salmon cake. So you ready? Okay, because you're going to make these this week. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Me. Just make sure we're not burning them up. No good. We'll have them got a little water. Okay. So, to go ahead and get started, the main thing is, especially this time of the year, when you're in the kitchen, you're going to want to wash your hands before you get started. Does anybody know how long you should really wash your hands? About 20 seconds. 20 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds scrubbing, um, but the whole process is about 20 seconds. Cross-contamination means if I touch raw protein, I need to go wash my hands. If I touch my hair, I need to wash my hands. Touch my nose, I need to wash my hands. So you're going to be washing your hands a lot. Does everybody have a cutting board in their kitchen? Okay. One of the things that um, will help you out the most is you want that board to be stable. You do not want it to move. So if you see mine's not moving. And the trick to that is you take a paper towel and you get it nice and wet, and you stick it on your countertop, and then you put your board. So there's no way your board's gonna move. So you always wanna position yourself right in front of the board with your hips in front of the board. You don't wanna cut like this, you don't wanna cut like that. Um, and then you always wanna have strong posture and strong hand on, on your knife. So here's my board. I pulled out a couple different knives that were here in the metabolic lab, and this is actually my knife. So one of these knives, you can tell this one's gone through the dishwasher. You can see these little marks on here. You don't want to put your knives in the dishwasher. Hand wash them and make sure they're nice and dry um, before you put them away. And you don't want to throw all your knives in a drawer. You kind of want to keep them in a little separate area. Um, if anybody in the family drinks wine, you can kind of stick a wine cork in the top, or you can actually buy knife separators. So I'm, I used to be six foot. Um, you have to find a knife that you're comfortable with. This knife, other than the Jolly Green Giant, nobody should be using this knife. It's just way too big. It's not a good knife to use. This knife, which is about a nine inch, is okay. Um, this is an all right knife. Um, but the main thing is, is you want to kind of rock as you move. No Kinsu Warrior. And you always want to keep mine full of where your other hand is. Is everybody right handed or left handed? Left, okay, okay, so you're left. All right, so opposite of. Um, so when you're cutting, your knife should sing. It's singing, it's rocking, it's not, you're not in Sue Warrior. So try to keep um, mindful of that. So I'm actually gonna use a little bit of a straighter um, knife. So when I'm getting ready to cut, thumb under, so I don't cut my thumb off, thumb under, fingers curved. And as I cut, I'm going to hit my fingers before I'm going to take my fingers off. So when you're just starting in the kitchen, don't do this and look around the room. You actually want to be looking. And you truly want to look to the right of your knife as opposed to the left of your knife because you're going to push your food into the knife. Okay? You see how I'm holding the knife? I'm not real tight, but I've got a good grip on it. If I'm cutting something small, which I'll show you in a second with the shallot, I might actually come up on the knife. So you just have to get a little bit used to the knife. Some, I bet most of you have 
a little knife like this at home or like this. These are called paring knives. This one's too big. You want to use a shorter knife. Alright, so I have everything together. It's called mise, mise en place. I've got everything together. I'm ready to go. I'm not doing a TV show. I don't have everything in nice little containers. I have a mise bowl. I've got all the vegetables that I'm going to need and I've got everything around. The main thing is all fruits and vegetables need to be washed and they need to be washed separately. Don't wash them at the same time. So I washed all the peppers and then I washed the lemons and then I'm going to show you about the leek. Okay, so we'll start with that. Um, I'm just going to go over real quick some ingredients that we're going to use today. Um, I've got some fresh parsley to garnish with, so you see I've got it in um, a little bit of water. And that can go in your refrigerator just like that. So these herbs are just like a flower. They need water. Spare is the same thing, keep them that way. On the salmon cake, we're going to use capers, and they're found in the pickle section of the grocery store, usually top shelf. These are an unopened bud of a thistle plant, but they're brined in a salty mixture, so they can get a little bit of salt. The salmon cakes, I just actually bought canned salmon, and I'm going to really talk about that when we get ready to do that. Your friend in the kitchen is pan spray. You're going to save 80 calories and 9 grams of fat for using this as opposed to a tablespoon of oil. So this is what we're going to be using a lot today. Um, and then we're going to use, be using panko breadcrumbs and some pickles. So one thing that I did pick up, does everybody know how to read a label? when you go find an ingredient. You know, if, if this is roasted garlic and herb, herb spice, does this company have to tell me what's in here? Or can it just be secret ingredient? They don't have to tell me. What do you think? They have to tell you. And they have to list all the ingredients in this descending order with the number one ingredient. So the title of this is Roasted Garlic Herb Spice. So what do you think is the number one ingredient in here? Roasted garlic? Herb? Okay. Herbs? You think? No. Salt. <laughs> salt. This is probably 80% salt. I mean, I don't know what the fit. It's a very high ratio of salt because the number one ingredient is salt. So make sure you start reading labels if you're not going to make your own spice blends. Um, because a lot of companies just start with salt because we all kind of like crave that. But one thing that we really want to watch is we want to watch sodium content in foods. So I picked this up just to kind of show you. All right, so we're going to get started with these veggie packs and they're in the oven and you saw that steam come out. So what we're going to do is we're going to steam the vegetables. Steaming is the healthiest way to cook vegetables. The worst way to cook vegetables is throw them in a crock pot and cook them all day. You're cooking out all the nutrients. So you either eat them raw, or even steamed. And so Thanksgiving's coming up and usually everybody has green beans that have been cooked all day with ham. But that's okay, every now and then. Um, so what we're gonna do, um, the classic, classical French technique for doing this is called empopillot. And it means cooking in parchment. So we've given you some parchment paper for you to do this at home. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy parchment paper if you wanna do this again. You can use foil. People call them cowboy packs. Um, the foil to me is a little bit harsh, but it'll still, it'll still work. So this recipe is great. We're just doing vegetables today, but you could put fish in the packet too. And it's just going to steam it and it'll be really nice. All right, so we're going to start looking at our vegetables that we're going to pull together. The first thing that I want to start with is a leek. So this is a leek. It's part of the onion family. You have the green stem, white stem, so it grows in the ground like that. And these little hair guys belong underground. It's one of the dirtiest vegetables that you can buy. And you have to make sure that you clean it not once, twice, but an, even a little bit of a bath. So what you're going to do is wash it the first time before you put it on the board. You're going to take off the root and then you're going to cut it off here to where it just goes a little bit darker green. And I've done that for you. So it looks just like this. And then you're going to take your knife and go over your hands and you're going to slice it. And then you're going to wash it again. So this is the second wash. Leeks can harbor a lot of sand, so you want to get that sand out. And then the third wash, what we're going to do is we're actually, so remember, thumb under, fingers curved. Do I sound like Insu Warrior? No, my knife is just slicing and I'm actually looking to the right. 
all these vegetables are just gonna steam so they don't have to be perfect cuts. So then the third is we're actually gonna soak the leek in some water. And what will happen is the sand is heavier than the leek. And if there's any residual sand, it's all gonna fall to the bottom. So three washes on the leek. Your recipe calls for uh, red potatoes. I'm actually gonna pull some of these off. Um, what I would recommend that you do, we've added those to this recipe. I would um, just put them in the microwave just for a couple minutes just to um, get a little bit of heat on them. And then you're just gonna slice them into little slices, just like that. So here we have potatoes and we have sliced button mushrooms. I picked up some shiitakes for you and I'm going to show you the difference. This is a shiitake mushroom, this is a plain button mushroom. Think about a button mushroom as tofu or vanilla ice cream. They're good, but they're even better if you add something to them. The shiitake mushroom is the end result. These are really good. Um, they've got a much uh, denser flavor. You want to pull the stems off and these are gills and you just want to slice through the gill just like that. So it's just a little bit more flavor. So when you make your veggie packets, if you're like, I like it, but I think I want a little bit more flavor, when you go to the grocery store you can buy shiitake mushrooms. The other thing that's in the recipe um, are peppers. So I want to show you how to cut a bell pepper. A lot of people get confused on how to cut one. Real simple is you top and tail it. So we top and tail. This is garbage. Bring it close to you. Come down with your knife and circle around just like that. And what it does is it cleans out the whole pepper for you in one go. So that's your trash. And then the rest of it is usable for your little packets today. So we're gonna use um, about one, I think for the recipe we broke it down into a fourth of a pepper. So again, I have my fingers curved around and I'm just slicing the flesh side up. And don't feel like it has to be perfect because it's gonna cook in the oven. I picked up a green pepper for you, and then we have a red pepper too. Anybody know the difference? Is it the same pepper, different pepper? What do you think? What about taste-wise? Do you know, is there a different? Like, uh, they have different flavors. Like, different, I guess, flavors. Flavors, mm-hmm, they yeah. do. Um, has anybody bought any peppers lately at the grocery store? Okay. Is there a difference in price from green peppers to red peppers? You know? Pardon? I think so. Yeah, there is. So a green pepper is actually an unripened pepper, and a red, orange, and yellow pepper is ripened. So what happens is the produce companies, let's turn this lower one off, The produce companies, so I'm the farmer. Here's the green pepper. It's ready to go. It's actually not ripe. And I can pick it, pick it, pick it, and I can send it to Kroger or wherever, and I can charge 50 cents for it. But I might have to leave these on longer if it's a different variety of a pepper, so this guy has to stay in the field longer. So it's more risk to get past. It's more risk for damage. So my rent on trying to get this pepper to here is more expensive. So that's why I'm gonna to to charge you more money for it. So this is really an unripened pepper. It's a very strong flavor and it'll overpower a lot of your dishes. So you want to choose red, yellow, or orange. It's a little bit more expensive, but you'll like the taste of a lot better. Okay, so we have, I'm gonna pull the leeks out. We have the leeks, mushrooms, potatoes, and then I'm going to get in some lemon. We're going to make a little concoction. So we're going to use lemon zest in here, and I just have a little zester. 
you don't have to go buy a real expensive zester, you can go to the dollar store and just get a little zester. Or you can actually zest with your knife. If you take the pith of the lemon, just like this, you can bring it down. To that you just see the yellow part. You have the lemon zest. So you don't even have to buy a zester as long as you have a knife. Okay? And then we're going to come in with thyme and some dried parsley, just some herbs in there. And remember I said we're going to use parchment paper and we're going to save 80 calories. So we're going to put the parchment paper out. Spray it all the way around. And this is that in poppy oat. We're going to take it and mix it. And this, I actually got overzealous and maybe made a little bit too much. Just put it right in the center. Just like that. Make a little packet. So I've got a little bit extra. I'm going to go ahead and put them in with my leeks. And we'll use them for something else. And then it's real simple. All you do is you fold it over and you grab it. And you make it into a little parcel, just like that. And then you throw it on a pan. And this is what it looks like. When it comes out of it. So this is what you're going to eat. So can you see how they're getting puffy? That's all the moisture in the vegetables is pulling up. And it's puffing up the paper. So you want to, you don't want to open them up right now because you can almost burn yourself. But you want them in just till you get lots of steam going on. So we're going to put this little one in the oven. I'm going to leave these ones in for just a second. All right? So any questions on those? Exciting stuff. Are you thrilled? Okay, so we're going to move on to the salmon cakes. There's a little bit more work to those because we're making a dressing and we're making a cake. So canned salmon, which is this, is the same as tuna fish. I can eat this raw and I'll be fine. So on these salmon cakes, all we're trying to do is warm them up. We're not trying to cook them any longer. They're already cooked. And actually, I'm going to pull these out because they're ready to go. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to make a little bit of a sauce to go with the cakes. And this is kind of a, a green goddess sauce. And we're going to start with those capers, which I told you those little guys there. So these are real briny. They're good. They're like salt. It's like a salty sweet. Um, I'm going to use an immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender home, does everybody have a little food processor? You have that? If you don't even have that, you can um, just chop it all up. So in here, I have a little bit of a pickle spear. I have about three-fourths of a teaspoon of capers. And I'm going to pull my knife back out, and I'm going to add what's called a shallot. So this is a shallot. Leek is part of the onion family. Shallot's part of the onion family. When anybody take a white onion and bite into it and go, ooh, delicious. There is an onion called a Valdea that's sweeter, but these are actually even sweeter. So what you're going to do is just take off that tip end, and we're going to cut it in half. This is a big shallot, so we're only going to use a little bit of it. So you just cut it in half and you peel it. Shallots can be found at the grocery store usually by the avocados and tomatoes. S H A L L O T. Shallot. Shallot. Okay, so Mother Nature gives you lots of little lines. All you have to do is follow the lines. Just take your knife, come down the lines. We don't have to do it this too much because we're going to use the food processor. So do you remember I said at some point today I'm going to come up on my knife? Now's the point when I'm going to do it. So we're going to take the shallot and add it to our pickle and our capers. 
and then we're also going to add mustard. Your recipe calls for Dijon mustard. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy Dijon mustard. You can use regular mustard too. So we're just going to use a tiny bit of mustard. Mustard is an emulsifier, which means it pulls things together and it holds them together. So what we're going to do, this is an immersion blender. So they're not too expensive. Um, I like it. If I can get it to work. It just kind of chops things up. in there to make it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add some yogurt because it just needs some more liquid in there. We're just going to move it around. Remember, this is our sauce. Then I'm also going to add some zest of lemon. So I'm just going to run that right over the top and we're going to add some lemon juice. So if you think about it, if a recipe just calls for lemon juice, you've got the zest. You can always just add it, and it's just going to add extra flavor. One of the nice things that you can do is you could take a spoon, I wouldn't take a knife, but you could take any kind of instrument and just shove it in the lemon, and it kind of helps squeeze it. Does anybody's grandmother have one of those old lemon things? So I now have a sauce, a little tangy sauce, and I'm going to make it a little bit tangier, and I'm going to add just a drip of hot sauce. So heat, pepper, is one of the last notes that you're going to taste. That's going to be one of the last things that pulls up. So I have my sauce ready to go. Now I'm going to make my salmon cake. So to that, I'm going to add a little bit more of that lemon juice. And I'm going to add panko breadcrumbs. That's going to bind it all together. And then I'm going to add apple. So you have a choice with the apple. You can leave peel on or take peel off. I left the peel on for the ones that you're going to eat, but I might go ahead and peel this one for you. What do you think the difference is from a nutrition standpoint if I leave the peel on? Does anybody know what, what added benefit you're going to get? Tough questions, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fiber. You're adding some extra fiber. But the one thing is, is if you're going to serve this to really young people, you might want to peel the apple because it might be too much fiber. Um, but I like the apple. And these are Granny Smith apples. They're real tart, and it's a hard apple. So same thing again. Put your little shredder over the bowl, and we're going to add shredded apple to the salmon. And then we're going to add a little bit of the sauce to give it some moisture. I'm going to move this other way. Turn this oven stuff top on. So here's our little cakes. You're going to add just a tiny bit, maybe half a teaspoon. You might even add a little bit more. You just want it moist enough. Okay, so food safety question. This is cooked salmon, and I'm going to eat this as a finished sauce. Should I double dip or should I pour? pour. I need to pour. Yeah. Do you ever watch TV shows and people stick their fingers in the thing and they put it in their mouth? Yep. Do you think I watch a lot of cooking shows? Probably <laughs> <laughs> just so you can see. Okay, so this is a non-stick skillet, which helps me because I don't have to use as much fat. And remember, I'm going to save some fat. I'm going to spray the pan. And I'm going to use a half cup measure, or you can just divide it by four, 
But just to show you, for portion control, I'm going to do a half cup measure. So I want my pan hot. So what this technique that I'm getting ready to do, it's called saute. It means to jump. So when the food goes in the pan, the food should jump. If the food just kind of sits there like, the food's not happy. The food wants movement. So saute is high heat. Your pan needs to be hot. Your fat needs to be hot. One thing that's not in the recipe, and if you want to do this, maybe we'll make two a little bit side by side, is you could run a little bit of um, breadcrumbs on top just for browning. So you want about a half cup, and then you want to take it and you want to lightly pat it. Don't squeeze it together, because if you squeeze it together, it's not going to taste very good. Somebody's going to look at it and go, what is this? So you want somebody to look at it and go, well, that's salmon or that's tuna. So make a little cake. So we're going to put it right here and our fat is just starting to really kind of get hot. And then the second one, I don't know, can you hear it? It's sizzling. That's what you want. You want your food to talk to you. Nobody in your house will say you're crazy. <laughs> but if I'm sauteing, I want my food to talk to me. I want it to be going pss, pss, pss. and it's saying, this is going to be really good. Alright, this one I just ran in a little bit of ready. And so I want you, I'm going to show you the difference in the two. Okay? So while those are cooking, we thought at each time we're going to go over some different things to do in the kitchen. So today we went over the board. We went over the knives. The other thing that I'm going to show you is, um, I believe in the kit, everybody has a thermometer. So everybody has a thermometer, and I've given you a piece of paper on um, temperatures when you cook foods. So when you cook foods, foods all have to be cooked to a certain temperature. Everybody knows chicken's 165. Uh, but fish is 145, so the best way to gauge this is use a thermometer. You should once a week, we'll do it first when you open up the thermometer, and then after that, once a week, every time you use your thermometer, you need to calibrate it. So how you calibrate the thermometer is you see this little thing here, this little knob? Take it and you put it in the thermometer. And there's a, a nut, a bolt. Make sure it's in the bolt. So what is freezing temperature? 32. 32. So we want our thermometer to say 32. So you have to stick it in there and leave it in there. And it's going down. It's a little bit more than 40. What? You're still going. So the trick is, you can't pull it out and say, what temperature is that? Because we now put it into the air temperature. You have to hold it in the water. So I'm at 39. I'm not 32. So what you do is you take the dial and you move it. It's locked in. You move it until it says 32. So now that I know when I temp fish, which fish is 145, it's the proper temperature. Okay? When we meet again, and you totally forgot that. And you say, can you tell me that again? I'll show you it again. Or you can look it up on Google. So that's calibrating the thermometer. So if your thermometer's wrong from the get-go, every temp that you take is going to be wrong. All right? These are almost finishing. This pan is getting a little hot. All right, any questions? Are you just hungry? I'm going to pull this off.